how should working professionals go about preparing for the GMAT? This is a question that I typically come across every time I speak to a prospective student who is working right now. How does one go about it? First and foremost, you don't need to quit your job to do justice to your GMAT prep. You will be able to get a score which is upward of 700 working and preparing for the GMAT. What is the kind of investment we are looking at in terms of the time commitment that you should be doing? Very, very elementary, very, very practical ones, right? You probably need to invest a dedicated one hour each day. That one hour could be in the morning or in the evening, but that one hour cannot be during your travel time. That's a one hour that you're going to be dedicating, sitting in a desk and focusing on your GMAT preparation. How long should you be doing that? If you invest one hour a day, that's about five hours during the week. And in addition to that, clock in another five hours during the weekend each day, Saturday five hours and Sunday five hours. So we're talking about investing a 15 hour week towards a GMAT preparation. How many weeks do you need in that case? You'll probably need about 20 weeks. A GMAT preparation runs for about 300 hours. So if you're doing 15 hours each week, we're talking about 20 weeks, give or take four to five months is what you'll be investing towards your GMAT preparation. What should you be doing to make the best out of these 15 hours? Plan that 15 hours properly. For a 15 hour preparation each week, invest about an hour a week to understand and schedule what you're going to be doing. Let's take an example. Start with something, only one topic at a time. When I say one part of the GMAT, I'm talking about start with a quant or start, start with a verbal. If you're starting with verbal, start with sentence correction or start with critical reasoning. Don't try and do too many things simultaneously. If you're starting with quant, for instance, let's say you're dedicating 15 hours. 15 hours, you'll be able to do justice to a very important topic in quant, something like number properties. You don't need more than 15 hours. Break that 15 into digestible components. What will the first one hour be? Let's say you're planning to do LCM and HCF. You'll say, I'll do one hour of LCM and HCF. How to find LCM and HCF? What is LCM and HCF? How to do prime factorization? When to use LCM and HCF? So you'll clock one hour for that on day one. Day two, you'll round it up with questions which are practice questions, which will help you crack the GMAT level questions, which could be word problems in LCM and HCF, applications of when you'll take LCM and HCF, those kinds of questions. So that 15 hours, make it, make an Excel sheet of it, what you're going to be doing and run through it methodically and without quitting even a single day. You cannot be saying that 15 hours, I'll do seven hours on Saturday, eight on Sunday and not do anything during the week. That's not a good preparation. You need to have consistency during your preparation timeline. Now, having said this, is these 15 hours the only thing that you can do to your GMAT preparation? You can easily clock another five to seven hours of non-dedicated preparation for GMAT. And that's equally important. What do I mean by that? When you travel to work, when you have free time, when you're traveling back from work or you're waiting for to meet a client, basically record things. You might have studied about mensuration or you'd have gone about solid geometry, surface area, volumes of cubes, cuboids and the like. Once you've done those formula, record it on your cell phone. Play it when you're traveling. Listen to your voice speaking about those formulae three or four times. You're never going to forget it. You want to check out whether a number is a prime number, how to check out whether a number is a prime number, record it or go to Vizaco's YouTube, YouTube channel. We have videos for each one of these things. Play them on your way back and forth from work. You can also plug in RC preparation during it. Pick a passage, read the passage, answer the passage. You don't need dedicated time to doing all of that. So you'll clock easily another five to seven hours during the week in addition to those 15 hours. If you have to make lifestyle changes, you need to. I would not even say if you have to. You necessarily will have to make some lifestyle changes. It's definitely worth it. What do I mean by that? It could be cutting down on Saturday night outings. It could be cutting down on your social engagements. Next four months, it's certainly worth it. And if it means, basically, let's say you drive to work, switch your habits, right? Start taking a cab, start taking public transport so that you get that time to prepare. When you're driving, you won't be having time to prepare. A Ola or a Uber will basically fit the bill in terms of preparing. Guys, they haven't sponsored me to say this, right? But they are a good option to plug in your GMAT preparation. How much extra are you likely to be spending on that? Probably 10K a month. Look at it. If you get a 740 in the GMAT on account of that, you'll get a scholarship, which is going to give you a tuition fee waiver of the order of 100,000 US dollars. 10,000 per month on cap fare for the next four months is certainly nothing compared to what you'll be getting. So make those lifestyle changes. Scheduler preparation, it's all of 15 hours a week for 20 weeks, you'll get a 700 plus in the GMAT.